Hi, so today I'm going to be talking about some polar area problems. Polar area, I think, is one of the hardest things to learn in Calculus BC. Maybe you just watched the lecture on 9-3 and you're still mystified because there is very few examples. So the goal of this video is to do all the area problems I could find and see if you can do it. What I would recommend is that you personally pause the video whenever I get a new problem and you try to do it yourself, then compare the solution, and I don't know, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me or talk to me or whatever in class. All right, now, the interior of R equals one minus cosine theta. So we first start by drawing. We're gonna first start by drawing it. So maybe you watch this one and you try the other ones. I don't know. This is a Limasson. It's um, important for Limassons that you think about the four key points, which are just as always for every single I don't know, trick problem ever. Theta equals oh now it's so tiny. Sorry. Theta zero pi over two pi, 3 pi over 2. And you should be able to graph a limason based on those four points, those four values of theta. When theta equals 0, cosine is 1, and so we are at the pole. For pi over 2, cosine is 0, so we're at 1. So pi over 2, 1 out. For theta equals pi, cosine is negative one, so should we be at we should be at positive two. Now so the pi angles over here are one, two out. And three pi over two, we would be back here. Okay? So what we have here is something that looks very roughly like this heart or as my students say, a butt shape. So, because that's the kind of people they are. So, we want the inside of that region. We want the inside of that region. So as I talk about in the 9-3 video, and it should go without saying that you should watch that video first, but now I'm saying it just to make sure it's all clear. Usually polar area will be easiest, uh, most easiestly done it will be easiest to do a polar area problem by considering half of the region and then doubling it. And this time it doesn't really matter. What I noticed as I plugged in those values, and I guess I could have filled that out. 0, 1, uh, 2, and 1. What I noticed as I filled it out is that I got back to a complete rotation back to here. So, one possible answer is just to do the full one-half times the integral from theta equals zero to two pi, one minus cosine theta quantity squared, d theta. Now, why is that the correct thing? So if I'm starting at the pole, and I'm drawing my spokes outward, I want my spokes to go around the full region. I want my spokes to do a full 2 pi rotation, a full 360 degree rotation, emanating out from the pole, and each time touching this curve. That's why it will all be one value. Now, a moment's thought really should show that this is the same as this. Make sure you make that dot. So what would this integral mean? This integral would mean starting at the pole and only rotating high out. So it would stop there and then I would double it. And those are the two basic techniques. Now the instructions say to evaluate. I'm not going to focus on that for time constraints. 
and because the calculator I can display on the screen is the old TI operating system, which won't look like most of your integral signs, and I don't want to get anyone confused. So here we go. Again, pause it, try it out, come back in five minutes or however long it takes you. Okay, here I go, three, two, one. One pedal of four, sine three theta. Theta is odd, no, sorry, the N is odd. So you should have a rose with three leaves and each leaf is length four. Now, I know basically what it looks like. The thetas that are interesting here would be the thetas that would get us a full one, a full sine equals one. So what would make sine one? Sine three theta equals one. I'm talking about three theta. I would have to have equaled pi over two. Um, three pi over two. Ooh. Or um, what's next? Five pi over two. So those will be the three leaves. So we're talking about theta equals pi over six. Pi over two. And. Let's see, a five pi over two divided by three would be five pi over six. So basically what I just showed is that if I plug in one of those three values, sine of theta will be, sine of three theta, three times that value will be one. Okay, now, or negative one. Yeah, sorry, we want plus or minus one. That's important because watch, so pi over 6, at the angle pi over 6, we get sine of pi over 2 times 4. So we're going to be 4 out. Now, I don't really know what this looks like, but it's something like this. We're just trying to sketch it. Um, pi over 2. I would get 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 would be negative 4. So this is the pi over 2 angle. But I want to go one, two, three, four back. Now that looks a little short now to me, but it doesn't really matter. It'll matter enough that I care about fixing it, I guess. So one technique, this is four. And we kind of imagine the circle having rotated it about 30 degrees or pi over six radians, something like that. Five pi over six, when theta is five pi over six, I get 5 pi over 2, which is also 1. 5 pi over 6 is the angle here. And again, picture 4 out. Something like this. So, it's not going to look nice. Spoiler alert. That's one leaf. Two leaf. Three leaf. That looks actually better than I could have imagined. Um, all right, so now we're talking about setting up the integral. Now, a lot of people want to try to stay on the leaf that's down here. I'm not really interested in doing any one leaf in particular. I just want whatever leaf's easiest. Now, in this case, it's always easiest, almost always easiest to start with theta equals zero. And when theta equals zero, we're going to shoot out that way, touching the curve immediately. And then I will draw my radial lines. And I will notice that this has covered about half of the leaf, exactly half of the leaf. So what was this value of theta right here? So the angle the integral I'm going to have is 2 times 1 half from 0 to pi over 6 4 sine 3 theta quantity squared. This 1 half again comes from the formula for polar area. 
Again, if you're not understanding where this part of the integral is coming from, you should watch 9-4-2 because it's half of it. So I wanted to get all the leaves, the entire interior of this graph. I would multiply this integral by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Now this is just one of many answers. Another answer would be pi over 6 until um, pi over 3. Another answer would be pi over 3 until pi over 2. Okay. A third answer, and again, this would work to go all the way over, would be just 1 half. 0 to pi over 3. Now, you might be mystified. How do you get pi over 3? I don't understand. And that's why I really recommend doing it whichever way is easiest for you. Pi over 3 is the point where this curve will intersect itself next. Pi over 3 is the next time sine of 3 theta will be 0. So if I went to pi over 3, I would have continued to rotate all the way out. Um, maybe I'll draw this in blue, and I'm talking about this would complete my traveling around the loop. But again, for many students, it's hard to find that next coordinate. It's hard to reason that out. So I would highly recommend you just do whatever's easiest and then double or triple or whatever. Take a minute. Try the problem out three pause like the video don't just like sit there and do nothing try it pause the video three two one another rose should have been what you got um cosine two theta again we're interested in cosine two theta equals uh one plus or minus one don't worry two theta would equal zero pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. Now, Mr. Levin, how do you know to list out four values of theta? Well, I know to list out four values of theta because I know my rows needs to have four petals because 2 times 2 is 4. Now, this is somewhat hard to memorize, but it'll be okay. It's just about reasoning it out. On the test day, you'll have to resurrect this knowledge on some level. The goal of memorizing basic facts about polar curves is that you won't have to try too hard to resurrect all that knowledge. So when theta equals zero, cosine is one. So we got three. When theta equals pi over two, cosine of pi is cosine, it would be cosine of pi, which is negative one. So the pi over two angle, we're counting backwards, one, two, three. Pi, two pi, cosine is one. Wow. And then three pi over two, three pi, negative one again. So that's what's weird. This one is actually the three pi over two point this one's the pi over 2 point. Roses are dumb. Actually, that's a really nice petal. Jeez. That was the first take, everybody. And now I'm going to get punished for saying that. And if you watch the calculator graph it, you'll notice some cool stuff. We're not supposed to be using the calculator here. I should that should go without saying Okay, now again, again, I'm going to be mostly interested in just getting whichever pedal's easiest. So now, if I wanted to start, if I wanted to start at theta equals zero, a theta equals zero, when theta equals zero, I'm all the way here. And as theta increases, I'm going around the circle. So it will be important this time to find actually out, to actually find out when is the next time cosine will be going to the pole. 
So cosine two theta equals zero. Two theta would be what? The values that would make cosine zero. Pi over two, pi over uh, three pi over two, etc. So this will be the first time. So that's the value I want. That's the first time at the pole. So therefore, these spokes are covering half a leaf, so I want to double them. And then I want to take the integral from 0, because that was out here. We found out pi over 4 is the upper bound. And then 3 cos 2 theta quantity squared. Okay. Okay. Ah, finally, an interesting one. The common interior of this thing and this thing. These are both Limassol, and you should know that because of how it looks. Again, and I'm not going to write out the table this time, I'm concerned with four values. Zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two. So, for zero... For zero, I get cosine of zero, which is one, and that one, three minus two. Pi over two, cosine of zero, I'm at three. Pi, cosine's negative one, positive two, five, but five along the pi angle. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, I never even considered the possibility this grid wouldn't be large enough. And then the other one, 3 pi over 2, would also be a 3, like this. So I believe this is what we would call like a concave, no, a convex lima song. Uh, that's what we get for doing it in one shot, everybody. That's one point. So it's somewhat circular, I shouldn't have to bump at the end. But obviously it has a weird convex type shape. Uh, it stretched out. Negative 3 pi over 2. I'll graph that in blue. Just so we're clear, this was the red one. This is going to be the blue one. So when, cos when 0, when theta is 0, where are we? Cosine of 0 is 1. We're at negative 1. So I don't want to go this way, I want to go this way. Zero and negative one backwards. Um, pi over two, I'm at negative three. Oh, overlap. Three, uh, pi, we're at negative five. One, two, three, four, five, in the opposite direction. And three pi over two, we're talking about negative 3 also. So this one will also be the slightly convex shape like that. Now the calculator will obviously draw something much nicer looking. Now I want the common interior. Oh no, let's do try. I want the common interior. Some students have a really hard time seeing this. One thing to do is just to tell me if you could, if you can, you can shade it directly. Great. In here, there's like three regions. There's three regions. There's one, region two, and region three. They're split up. And then the, I'll just do it, outside, okay? Outside is clearly outside both of them. That's why I keep calling it outside. So, no checks. Now, if I was going to shade inside the red, who would get hit? If I was shading just inside the red Limasson, I would have caught here and here. 
If I was shading inside the blue, I would get here and here. So which one's in common? It's definitely this middle one. And I'm not really sure if there's a better way to describe that. The other technique, which you may be familiar with at some point in your life, is you shade inside the blue, you shade inside the red, wow. and you look at what makes the dirty, ugly color. Now for you, if you're on paper and you're having a hard time with this, vertical lines everywhere you see your inside red horizontal lines everywhere you see your inside blue and oh it's the region that has both those are the two ways but again it's just easiest if you do at least this numbering system or you can just see that this is the region common to both okie dokie now this one has a lot of different ways to do it. Um, let's just talk about the easiest way. Let's talk about the easiest way. Let's try to get a way to get spokes covering half of the region. So my spoke for theta equals zero would hit that side. And we're rotating around until this point of intersection. And then I would want to be using different color spokes. Now, why would I want to use different color spokes? Because my boundary line is now something different. And then I would see I've clearly covered half of this region. And by symmetry, all I would need to do is double this integral. That's one argument. So here we go. So I want to be doubling whatever I get here. Now that pink integral, we started at zero. We're always trying to start at zero to make our life easier. It'll be one half. Now where will we stop? We have to find this point of intersection. POI, I don't know. No, that was point of inflection. Intersect. Um, we want 3 minus 2 cos to equal negative 3 plus 2 cos. Now, if I combine, we get like terms on separate sides, 6 equals 4 cos sine theta. Which will be 3 halves equals cosine theta and this is uh, troublesome I pause the video to think about it myself this has no solutions now how can we explain that well what was this point for the red limousin for the red limousin, this is a clearly, this is clearly the pi over 2 one. We plugged in pi over 2, we got a nice positive value. I'm going to finish writing this. This is for the red one. This is my red limousin. Pi for red. Now, to be honest here, what's happening? They clearly share that point. I hope it's clear to you. They clearly share that point. But what was this point on the blue Limasson? On the blue Limasson, this was the point um, 3 pi over 2. And on the red limousin, this is the point positive 3, comma, pi over 2. 
So that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the fact that because it's polar, because it's awful, there are two ways of writing this coordinate. And though they do overlap, it would be different. Just different. So now let's face the other one, the purple, the purple area. So this is going to be even harder. This is going to be even harder. So when theta equals zero, where am I for the blue limousine? I don't know if you can hear that. Sorry. For theta equals zero on the blue limousine, I'll do that. I'm here and actually I'm rotating around the other way like there's pi over 2 so you can do this a number of ways you can say this area is clearly equal to this area which is true you could say that um, you could use 3 pi over 2 up until something else So if that's 3 pi over 2 and we want to go this way, what angle should we use? Now this is hard because this is 0, but it's also 2 pi. And that's what I want to use. This is not my favorite method to solve this problem. Take this as another lesson of how polar can be awful. My favorite method to solve this problem is just to look at the pink and realize that this is one quarter of this perfectly symmetric region of this region that's symmetric about both the x and the y axes so i can just do four times one half about four and a half make sure you make the dot But that requires a bit more thinking. Either way, you may have ran into that problem intellectually of how can I find this intersection? They don't technically intersect. In terms of parametric, right? Um, there's no time when both particles are in the same location. There's no time when both the red particle and the blue particle are at the same spot. They both cycle around, their paths cross, but they themselves don't like collide. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay. That's the end of the non-calculator section. Use your calculator to graph this. Try to get the window the same as mine. I spent some time playing with the window just to see, um, just to make sure I was understanding it just to make sure I had a good picture to show all of you. So again, take a minute between the loops of this guy. Okay, here I go. So as I emanate out, as theta increases, theta equals zero will give us one the whole oh sorry let's do it the other way let's talk first about what we want between the loops hopefully that's clear hopefully it's clear the region they want is this region they don't want to go inside the little loop right there. Even though I'm coloring inside of it because I can't color. Okay, so we're looking for that region. We don't want we don't want inside that middle loop. But as I draw spokes, as I draw spokes here, something is happening. Specifically, I cannot draw a spoke emanating out from the 
origin out from the pole that doesn't go through that polar area right there another big problem is that my spokes if I'm starting at zero just go back to rewind they're missing that sliver down there so there's a couple ways to work with this I want you to think about it try it out pause the video three two one the way to handle it is either to rewind a bit to figure out how to get here or to go slightly more naturally I know I could just get this one going. Start by looking at quadrant two and then go to quadrant three because at least those go in order. Okay. So we're gonna have that red integral. Now that's obviously counting that inner loop which we don't want. But I want two times this red integral. So that's pi over 2. How do I know it's pi over 2? Let's confirm it. Oh, okay. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Good. Now I ask myself, when I'm going to get back to the pole? Well, that's a little bit of a hard question to answer. That's definitely a hard question to answer. The way to get that, the way to get the pole is to set r equals zero. One minus two sine theta plus equals zero. Sine theta equals negative one half. Theta would be seven pi over six or 11 pi over six. Okay. So that'll be the first time I get into that pole. That'll be the first time I get into that pole will be the 7 pi over 6 angle. Now you could use your calculator to find it. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but you should be able to do it by hand too. Oh, oh, oh. So this gives me all that red area. Okay, so now let's pick up with 7 pi over 6. Because maybe if we just keep continuing in that fashion, we'll be able to figure this out. So now, if I was after 7 pi over 6, what I want to do is I want to remove these spokes. Or rather, these portions of the spokes. Okay, if we can just cut those out will be great. Now a moment's thought shows that those are the same as these spokes. And those spokes are the ones I would get coming around from 7 pi over 6. And going to where is this? Now for me I know that's either going to be a pi over 2 or a 3 pi over 2. Which one is it? It's definitely theta equals 3 pi over 2. Because 3 pi over 2 into sine gives me negative 1, negative 2, negative 1. So counting backwards. We also should in general know it's going to be an angle that's bigger than 7 pi over 6 if we're doing everything right. Now, that will be half of this loop. I want to double it. And I don't want to add it. This is the area I want to subtract. And you would combine those two integrals. And here I'll just give you the answer. If you type this in your calculator correctly, you should get 8.3 
Make sure you can type in your calculator right. You will not do well on the test if you cannot do that. Okay, so that one's a much harder one to think about. The idea is that these spokes are too long. I don't want the inner part of them. I just want this outer part. The way I can do that is by subtracting them like so. All right, now, which one's which? I graphed it on the calculator. I know which one's which, but do you? So R equals three cosine theta. Which one's that? Hmm. Pause the video, make sure you figure it out. You should be able to figure it out just by looking at the picture and not using your own calculator. Three, two, one. R cosine three theta, or three cosine theta. R equals three cosine theta is a circle. And in fact, it's this circle. Oh, well, that's lucky, huh? There's R equals three cosine theta. Now two minus cosine theta is supposed to look like a limousine, but it's a convex type of limousine. And that's what's so strange about it. Okay, but if one of them was blue, it's definitely this one. Now, why does this work out this way? Hmm? Well, I want you to keep in mind, this is one. Just a little bit misleading. Oh, I'm sorry, this is two? Yeah, this is two. Yeah, so I found out that picture was wrong. Um, okay, so that can happen. I definitely didn't graph what I thought it. Those both look like circles. Maybe it was for the next one? No. No. All right. So I'll still say this one's a circle. Three cosine theta is still this circle. Let's shrink this up. Bigger, probably. Yeah, bigger. And I don't know, this circle is actually a circle. So you can see how bad of a job your calculator can do with polar. But it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we're able to see a bit. And this guy is the Lima sum. So I'll actually use my hand to graph it. Sorry about that. That's what I get for trying to do a bunch of work last night. Oh, my screen break. Pausing because I don't want to mess it up. So, convex limousin circle. Now, inside the red, inside red, and outside blue. Okay. So, again, if this is what gives you trouble, there's four basic regions. Those two circular type shapes cut the plane into. That guy. That guy. That guy and that guy, right? Now, which ones are inside R equals three cosine theta, the red one? Inside, inside. Which of the four are outside two minus cosine? That one and that one. You don't have to like that method, but if you're having trouble doing this, I recommend doing something like that. Because a lot of people are having trouble seeing which is both. So here I go. I'm going to shade this. That is the region that is inside one and outside the other. All right. So. Again, my main method, the only tool I have in my toolbox is trying to do the area as simply as possible. So again, I'm gonna start drawing spokes with theta equals zero for the red one. Now I know to start with the red and that's what the experience. Because I want to add the area inside the red. I want that area. And as I rotate, that's what's happening. These are my spokes emanating out and we cover all this until I get back to the pole zero 
And then this is what? What's the first time this function will be zero? Pi over two. So the red, the red area, of which I'll want to double, maybe I'll talk about doubling it later, okay? The red area would be this integral expression. Zero to pi over two, three cos theta, quantity squared. And now what don't I want here? What don't I want? I don't want this part of that spoke. I don't want this part of the spoke. And what you notice is that these are exactly the spokes emanating until Okay, I just noticed I did something else wrong. Okay. This problem's a bad problem. So, where do I want to stop the red spokes? Where do I want to stop the red spokes? I'm leaving, I think I'll leave these in just so you can see that it's hard for everybody. I don't want to continue the spokes all the way back to the pole. I want to continue them to that point right there. Why? Because if I keep going, what I'm getting is the area um, right here in this sliver, which is not outside blue. Okay, so I want to stop at that intersection. So, intersect. 3 cos theta equals 2 minus cos theta. Cos theta equals 1 half. Theta equals pi over 3. So I want to stop those spokes at pi over 3, not pi over 2, which will be getting me this area also, this little blank silver, sliver. And now the same thing I was trying to say earlier. I don't want that part or that part. Okay, we want to kill those parts of the spokes. Also starting at 0, also going up until we get to that intersection point. So minus one half integral. Also starting at zero. And this intersection is also pi over three. Two minus cos theta quantity squared d theta. That region would represent half of the green, so I went up with a whole thing by two. So what did we learn with this example? It's very easy to keep going around in a full circle, just to try to find something nice and convenient, but we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to stop it when we are at the boundary of that green region. This is not at all touching the green region. I don't want to continue the revolution to pi over 2. I want to stop at pi over 3. Okay, the common interior of r equals 3 and r equals 6 sine 2 theta. Okay. What's inside this guy? To be clear, that one is the circle which doesn't look like a circle at all with this stretched out scale I used. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Maybe the oval one will work? Better? I don't know. Is this a million points? Active Inspire Symptom. Okay. This is a circle. It's just been stretched out because I changed my scale to make it look big and mighty. 
I think it should be clear what's inside that circle. So now the question becomes, what's inside the circle and inside the rows? And you should be thinking, oh, it's this. Right? And then this. That and some of that. Okay, so try to come up with an integral. Come back when you can. Three, two, one. Okay, now what type of area do I want here? What type of integral expression did you guys come up with? There's a lot of ways to do it wrong, and one way to do it right. And it's kind of just tough to see. So if I was going to call this blue, like let's just color this rose in the first quadrant blue. By rose, I mean the petal of the rose. Oh my. Okay. So as I'm shooting out from the origin, if I'm just covering the green, where do I want to stop my first theta equals zero pole? Right there. And then right there. And then right there. This little tiny sliver is only going to be determined by spokes shooting out from the origin, touching the blue curve up until this first point of intersection now where is this point of intersection let's find that intersection shall we okay three equals six sine two theta one half equals sine 2 theta 2 theta what would make sine what goes in sine sine to make one half Ooh, we're talking about pi over 6 we're talking about blah, 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 5 pi over 6 and so theta equals oh boy pi over 12 that's that first intersection right there it's pi over 12 so i definitely want to have these blue spokes going up to pi over 12 now does that make sense does that make sense we good okay now so my blue integral Two. Settle that in a second. Let's just do one half. One half. The integral starts at zero to pi over twelve. Okay. And it's always touching the blue one. That's why they're blue spokes. Like so. So we're gonna have all of those. We're going to have all of that, and then I want to continue my spoke. So after pi over 12, I'm definitely touching the red region up until here. And again, this gap would also be the other blue one. Okay, so I'm going to have two of these. Now, you have definitely options here. The easiest thing I think I would see is that I would go up to my next intersection with the orange. Plus one half times the integral from pi over 12 to five pi over 12. Three squared. Now, 
if you don't like that, if you want to double both of them, you just have to find what's halfway through this region. What's halfway through the region? What's a quarter of the way through the circle? Sorry, what's a quarter way through the half circle? So it's like pi over four. Pi over four right there. Mm -hmm. Now, that would be one of these. So I would take all of this and times it by four. Uh, there's different solutions. Again, maybe you did pi over 4 up to here, and then the, both of these are doubled. Okay, that's the other one I would see most common. Does that make sense? And if you were having in both of them, it would be times 8 overall. Okay, I'll write down the answer just to make sure you're all on the same page. You can see if yours worked out, if you got this answer, or, okay. Ah, the mitten one. So I graphed it, that's what I got. Try it. Three, two, one. Okay. If you're drawing spokes. Well, you'll notice is that there's no real nice symmetry here. You're just always going to use the spokes going from the pole, touching the mitten. So it's this integral, 0 to pi, always times 1 half, theta plus sine 3 theta one D squared. Okay. okay. That's it. Nice. Oh. Now, different renumbering. It's a new homework, sort of. So, let's just do A and B. I can do that easily. So, it's bounded by the polar curve R equals 1 minus sine theta. That's the curve and the line theta equals pi over 6. Now, we talked about this problem in class briefly. And the students were definitely confused by how this is a line. Well, convert it to polar coordinates. Sorry, convert it back to rectangular coordinates. It's definitely this line right here. Oh, that should have been in red. Boom. See? Okay. Now, so if I wanted this area here, the spokes I would draw would first follow this line. That would be easiest. Then a little bit higher. And I rotate my way until I got to zero. And then I would be going around in this way until I got to the end. So it's just simply one half from negative pi over six, and now wins it back at the pole. Hmm. One minus one, ideally. So what's that value? Pi over two. One minus sine theta quantity squared. So that's my answer for A. That's it. For B, we want to use the polar arc length formula. So this is from 9-4. If you haven't seen 9-4 yet, this might not make sense to you, but I thought I might as well do it. So it's from the same bounds. The square root. 1 plus dr d theta. Right? Good? Cool. Alright. 
the common area, not area common to the interiors of four cosine theta and r equals two. All right, people, four cosine theta, what does that look like? Oh, it's a circle. It's a circle. Give yourself a second to draw it. We're toward the end of this video. I've been recording for a while. Give yourself a minute to try this problem all together. You shouldn't just be watching me do all these problems unless you're just reviewing. All right, r equals four cosine theta. That's something that looks like this. Oh, so close. There you go. Diameter four along the x axis. R equals two. Sorry, let's just make sure this is labeled this red. R equals two will be blue. And we'll do another circle centered at zero with a radius of two. Now maybe you're sitting there thinking, gosh, Mr. Levin, it's really hard to keep track of all these different polar formulas. And I would say, yeah, I know. I know it's tough. But it's okay. All right, now, if I was starting out at the origin along the line theta equals zero, where do I want to stop my line? Right there. Right there. I first only want to use up until that intersection blocking out the blue. So, it's half theta from zero, and now what's this intersection? When will four cos theta equal two? Well, that's when cos theta will equal one half. Well, that's when theta will equal pi over three. I was telling one of the students I tutor, there's only ever three options, honestly, if you're doing it by hand. A little more, maybe. But like if it's if it's in the first quadrant, there's only three. Uh, pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4. This one looks mostly like a pi over 3, and we confirmed it. And then this one will be the nice formula, the one that's simple. Okay, now, picking up from there, and this is what's hard for people to see, I still need to complete going around. I still need to get this orange sliver, which is really hard to see. But there is this orange sliver in class. I drew this down here also. So maybe it's a little more clear. There's spokes down here, too. Now, that'll be picking up at pi over 3. and decaying until we get back to the pole. So what will make this go to the pole first? Pi over two, bounds check. These should be greater. They should be in order from least to least. From least to greatest, sorry. For cosine theta quantity squared. And now I'm gonna take this whole expression and multiply it by two because it clearly would have only gotten us half of the area common. I never shaded the area common. I'm sorry. We're talking about that little, I don't know, eye type shape. Okay. Okay. The figure at right is shown bounded by the polar curves r equals four. It's on top, it's showing you r equals eight sine theta. This is a lot like how free our FRQs will look like. Find the area of the shaded region. Okay. Well, boys and girls, if I started, I would have red lines emanating there. And after that point, I want to be touching the other curve. I want to be touching the other curve. By symmetry, this will be enough. By symmetry, that's half of it. All right, take a second. 
You should really be pausing every single time you see a problem. Three, two, one. Here we go. That red one was touching eight sine theta. So my red area was one half eight sine theta squared going up to that intersection. Four equals eight sine theta. Ew, I can't draw it. Sine theta equals one half. Theta equals pi over six. So starting at zero, going up to pi over six. Beautiful. D theta. Plus, now this blue integral, that's going to be pi over 6, that's going to be pi over 2, 1 half pi over 6 up to pi over 2, 4 squared d theta. Multiply this whole thing by 2, and we're going. We're good. Perimeter of the shaded region. Just for emphasis, I'm going to do 2 times pi over 6. What's the derivative of 8 sine theta? If you said or thought 8 cosine theta, you are correct. Heaps. That would be this half. And then I want to do this half. Just using the formulas. Oh no. I can't read. What's the derivative of 4? Oh, it's 0. Oh. That's because the circumference of a circle is is the angles if you're using polar. Mm -hmm. It is true. It is true, everybody. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Convert the two polar equations to rectangular form. I'm going to skip that if you don't mind. I'm not feeling it. Set up an integral with respect to variable x, top minus bottom. Because this is why I want to get the area common to the two interiors. Alright, now take a second and try it out. You've learned everything at this point. Three, two, one. Okay, so first things first. That's the lemnus gate. It doesn't come up very often. But honestly, you should be able to do it by process of elimination as well. Because you're familiar with this other thing. And when I say thing, I mean the circle with radius root 5. Here's a question for you. What's the diameter? Five. No, it's not five. Two root five. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Now, common to the two interiors, the interior of the blue circle and the interior of the lemnus gate only really leaves you with one teeny tiny option. We're talking about green. Okay. So if I wanted to cover all of green, as always, my spokes will start along these lines. Touching the red. And then after that point, I want to be touching the blue. Until I get to that. And then I want to honestly be using the orange again because I'll be touching the red for this last bit. 
So like we talked about in one of the other problems I did during this session, this is very, very familiar. Um, the first goal is to find this point of intersection. This point of intersection shall be important for us. So we want r squared to equal this. Now if you put in r equals root 5 in for r squared, that's the way to do it. If you were trying to put 10 sine theta equals 5, that's not right. So root 5 squared, because that's what r is, equals 10 sine 2 theta. And if this felt repetitive at all for you guys, it's because you can only really work with three angles by hand. You got one half equals sine two theta. Theta two theta e pi over six. And you could actually find the other one would be five pi over six. So theta, those two intersections would be pi over twelve and five pi over twelve. So if you messed up, pause again right now and try to fix your integrals. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. The orange integral. Two times one half, because there's two orange regions that are symmetric. Zero to pi over 12. And I want r squared. That's just 10 sine two theta. It really is. That might make you feel uncomfortable, but there should not be a square here. There should not be a square here. There absolutely should not be a square here. Make sure you don't have one. And now this blue region, this blue region, I can just go straight up. plus one half pi over 12 to five pi over 12. Yeah, it's the rose one. That's, it's the rose one we did earlier. Root five, one b squared, d theta. If you have a square root squared, that's what I'm talking about. It's the same thing. This would only be one half of that because as I hope you all saw, this is the other symmetric piece. So you need to, you absolutely need to make sure you're doubling it. There are other ways to do it. You could have gone a quarter of the way through this top half. That would be pi over four. So if you stop this from pi over 12 to pi over four, there should be a two right here. Otherwise, that's all I have to say for now. I don't know how long I've been recording. It's felt like a while. Hopefully that's enough practice. I think that's every single polar area problem I gave for homework. So if you can do all these, if you needed help on all of these, you should try to do it again in a day or two and see what you can do without my help. And then if you need a hint, you can watch the video. Ask somebody ask me in person. All right, well, that was fun. Nothing like math on a Sunday morning. All right, bye-bye. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. See ya.